Hello all, welcome to this video lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn a short summary of the poem, Australia, written by A.D. Hope. And this is Dr. K. Prabha, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Sita Lakshmi Ramaswamy College, Trichy. Alex Dilbent Hope was born in the year 1907 and died in the year 2000. He is best known for his essays, poems and satires. One of the American journals appreciated him as the 20th century's greatest 18th century poet. He was greatly influenced by Pope and other poets like Auden and W.B. Yeats. His selected prose and poetry was compiled and published by his friend David Brooks. The Sith Horn Find is a book which is compiled and published by the National Library of Australia to celebrate Hope's contribution towards the growth of Australian literature. In the last phase of his life, he was suffered from dementia, which means memory loss. A.D. Hope has written many poems in his lifetime about various themes. Here is the list of important poems written by the writer. A.D. Hope was greatly acknowledged and appreciated for his various contributions towards the growth of Australian literature. Here is a list of awards which was won by the writer in his lifetime. So what are we going to explore from this poem? At the end of the poem, we'll be able to find about the idea behind its civilization. And in the beginning of the poem, the writer also has given some geological and political details about the country and how the country suffered as a colony under the European nations. And he also explained about the wilderness and the beauty of Australia in this poem and how he feels very bad for the lack of inner beauty and the presence of only just the external beauty of the country. He also throws, throws some light about the sufferings of the people. He just mentioned that the people aren't living in the country, but they are just surviving. He feels very bad for the loss of originality and vitality of the nation in this poem. And at the end of the poem, he also criticizes the modern civilization. He says that people are just like the apes, which imitates the human beings and their behavior. In the same way, he is also explaining that the Australian people are just imitating the Western civilization, just like the apes. So this is the first stanza of the poem. Look at how the writer has begun the poem. He just compares and explains the beauty of the trees in that country. It is a nation full of trees, full of green everywhere. But now we can see the desolate grey, which means a sad, a melancholic state of mind of the people because the country have been exposed to various wars, which darkens her beauty and her historical significance. In this stanza, he also used a mythological reference, an Egyptian mythological creature called Sphinx, to express the historical, the ancient significance of the country. And now it is demolished. So by saying, by stating the Sphinx in the stanza, he says that Australia's realm of intelligence and power have been worn away now. Her sign historical significance and beauty is no more now. So this is stanza number two, in which he is trying to portray the mindset of the Westerners and what do they think about this country. They call her a young country, but they lie. And she is the lost of lands, the emptiest. So he's telling that this is the country which is having least importance and the landscape is also very small. This is what the Westerners think about this country. And he also compares the country with a woman beyond her change of life, a breast still tender, but within the womb is dry. So here he is just mentioning the country with a lack of beauty and which is out of waste. This is what others think about this country. But in reality, this is not like that. This country is having more importance and significance in the history. And it is also full of natural resources abundant and various resources 
wild beauty and nature. But the perspective of the Westerners is completely contradictory. In the third stanza, he is trying to expose the superstitious belief of some of the peoples in the country. Without songs, architecture, history, the emotions and superstitions of young and lands, her rivers of water drawn among island sands, the river of her immense stupidity. So here in this stanza, he is trying to explain people are full of superstitious beliefs, which is something irrational which is a very threatening one for the development of the nation. So we have great poets who sang about the history of Australia and the importance of the country. We have great architects. We have a great history behind us. But nowadays people are full of superstitious beliefs and they are thinking something like just like irrational. Look at the waters are flowing in the river in a very beautiful manner. But here, what is immense, the stupidity is immense and he is condemning the mindset of the people in the third stanza. In the fourth stanza, he criticizes how the cities of Australia, starting from Keynes to Perth, have been inhabited with the various Westerners. And these men, they arrive from other countries and settle in the native country where the native people and the aborigines and their life is completely disturbed. And they just say that we live, but we survive. The nation is full of settlers now. And these inhabitants from various countries, they disturb the peaceful existence of the native people. So they just enter into the country like the flood to disturb the tribal people, the native people, the aborigines who are already in that country. In the fifth stanza, he strongly criticizes the settlers of Australia who were just settled in the five important cities of Australia like Melbourne, Sydney, Keynes, Perth and Canberra. Now how they are living, they are just like the five teeming source which drains the complete energy, the resources of the country. And he compares the settlers just like the parasite. These parasites, they completely suck up the blood and energy of the host. In the same way, these second-hand Europeans, they pollute the alien shores. They completely drain up each and every resources in the country, leaving nothing for the native people. And these second-hand Europeans are just unwelcome people from different parts of the world who just came and settled in Australia just like a swarming of bees and other insects and they are disturbing the life of the native people. This is something unnecessary and unwanted unlike by the poets of Australia. In the sixth stanza, the writer is somehow trying to console the mind of the native people by telling that he is also returning home gladly with some kind of hope just from the lush jungle of modern to find the Arabian desert of the human mind, hoping if still from the deserts, the prophets come. He is also waiting for a day where, in which he would meet a prophet, someone who will be helping the native Australian people to come out of their trouble and to change their mindset about the other Westerners. In this way, the writer and also the other writers of Australian literature are waiting for a prophet to come and save them and to rescue them, just like some of the prophets who came from the Arabian desert. So in this stanza, he is explaining the people to wait with a hope for the better future. In the final and concluding stanza, he strongly criticizes the idea behind modern civilization. He strongly condemned the settler civilization which is just like a waste and nothing springs out from it. There is no soul and there is no life in the settler's civilization. And now yes, we, we have to remember that how he begins the poem. He just explained that the, that is the country which is full of green. And now what you could see, only the savage mindset people, they are very cruel and they are having nothing for the native people and the aborigines. 
and in the beginning he would say that the country is full of green and now there is nothing in green he could see only the crimson red and cherry red color which says that there is no life and there is no soul and there is nothing in the beauty and this is what he says that that just external beauty is there and there is no internal or inner beauty and he is also having a doubt about what is called the modern civilization and he strongly criticizes that the modern civilization is just nothing like the cultured apes we just imitate the civilization of the westerners without knowing the historical significance of the ancestors who lived in the country in the past in the same way the people in australia they forget their own significance because of the interference of the westerners and the second hand europeans who came and settled here and they disturb the country's inner beauty and also the beauty of the life of the native people yeah to sum up the poem critically explores the mindset of ad hope about the westerners and the disturbance which they cause to the life of the native people and he would finally end the poem with the optimistic note that they are waiting for some of a prophet or a leader who would carry the message from the god to lead the people in a right way and they are waiting for someone to save them from this kind of disaster or this kind of parasitical human beings who are still settling or still in australia disturbing the native people and these are some of the literary devices used by the writer and we also see that the poem is full of various imageries and symbols we have various literary devices like simile and metaphor to make this poem a beautiful one thank you for listening